Hello world and welcome to learning Java one byte at a time. This is the ninth video in a tutorial series geared at bringing the wonderful wide world of Java to those with little or no programming experience. In the last video, we talked a little bit about compilation errors and runtime errors and common ways to troubleshoot. And in this video, we're going to delve a little deeper into the structure of Java and talk about the differences between classes and objects. And so Java is an object-oriented programming language, and that means that much of the programming is going to be oriented around objects. Well, what the heck is an object? Well, if you think of a real-world object like a lamp or a dog, you can separate all of the qualities of those objects into states and behaviors. And so a lamp has possible states of being on or off, and it has potential behaviors of being turned on or turned off. Likewise, a dog has possible states of being hungry, restless, or tired, and it has possible behaviors of eating, uh, barking, or sleeping. And now software objects are not unlike real-world objects. They have states and behaviors, and as we've seen already, we use variables and uh, functions. And in the object uh, class file, or in the object file, you're going to assign states through the variables, or as Java calls them, fields and you're going to assign the behaviors through the functions, or as Java calls them, the methods. Now the class file is going to be the blueprint or the prototype for creating object types. And so a lot of times you'll see the uh, states and behaviors declared, the potential states and behaviors declared in the class file, and sometimes even instantiated through the class file. And now sometimes you're going to use methods to instantiate the states. And when you use methods to instantiate states, that's called encapsulation. And one of the benefits of this is that it hides much of the, the background of the code from the user. And so if we were to jump into our notepad++, we could uh, start a fresh file called dog.java. And we could go ahead and make a class file. And this class file is going to be a blueprint for creating dog objects. Now we'll go ahead and start by declaring the class and we'll call it a dog class like so. And inside this class, we're gonna go ahead and define the states and the behaviors of what a dog object could have. And so we'll go ahead and, and think of different things we could have. Let's say that we're going to have a breed, a color and a name, and then we're gonna have an age and a weight. And so let's go ahead and use string variables for the breed, color and name. So we'll declare those as such. And then let's say we're going to use integers for the age and the weight. So we'll declare that like so. All right, so then furthermore, we're going to need to um, instantiate these through encapsulation. And one way that we can do that is by defining the methods in the class file. So we're going to have a couple of methods in which we assign the breed, the color, the name, and then the age and the weight. So we can do that like this. Now you might be wondering why I'm using the variable name breed up here and the variable dog breed down here. And that's because this is gonna be a static variable to the class dog that we're gonna know as a breed. But when we're actually performing the, the assignment, we need to pass it through as a parameter. And so to keep it from being confusing, we're just gonna give it a different name down here.
right, so we have all of the states of the dog, and then we have the methods that are going to be assigning those states of the dog so that everything is encapsulated to the class object, and none of this is going to be accessible by the user. The last thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and give it a behavior. The behavior is going to be done through a method that we're going to call uh, display state. And with this, we're simply going to print to the screen the states of the dog as created. And there's an empty print line statement just for formatting. And if it's not already clear, what I've done here is I'm printing out to the screen the literal word breed, and then I'm concatenating the variable, the string variable breed to that, so that if it's done correctly and it's assigned, it will actually print out breed and then whatever the breed is. So if I was able to do that correctly, then we have a successful class uh, file. We have a successful prototype <clears throat> and blueprint for a dog object that has the states of breed, color, and name, age, and weight. It has the encapsulated methods that we're using to make those assignments. And then it has a behavior called display state that will print out to the screen um, all of those attributes. And the last thing that we want to do is because we're going to be making the dog object in a different file, and you'll notice that we don't have that mandatory uh, main method, the entry point, and that's because this is going to actually be just the blueprint for the dog object. It's not going to actually be executing any code in and of itself. This class file is going to be called from a different class file, and that class file is what's going to have the main method. We're not going to actually put the main method in here. But because we're going to be using uh, separate class files, having one call the other, we need to assign them to the same package. And a package is just a way for Java to recognize that classes are going to be operating with each other. And so we'll do that like this. We'll assign it to the package that we'll call dog breeder, like that. And when naming packages, it's uh, useful to keep all of the letters in lowercase so they don't get confused with the, uh, the classes or the methods. And now that we have a package called dog breeder, it looks like everything's complete. Um, I think that that's actually enough for one video. I don't want it to get too lengthy, but in the next video, we're going to go ahead and make our um, the, uh, the method that's going to create the dog object. We'll create a couple of dog objects and print to the screen all of the states of the dog, and we'll use the uh, behavior display state to do that. And if we've done everything correctly, we'll actually be able to get the information displayed to the screen. Anyway, that looks like it's enough for one video. Hopefully we see you back again for the next one. We'll create a couple of dogs and then we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching. And if you've made it this far, I just want to say thank you for sticking along. Otherwise, um, have a wonderful night and we'll see you next time.